What is mechanics of materials? And why many students in various engineering disciplines need to know about it? I'm Nicholas Libre, and here we are going to discuss about these questions. Mechanics of materials is one of the fundamental areas in engineering mechanics. Engineering mechanics consists of three main topics, statics, dynamics, and mechanics of materials. Statics and dynamics are devoted primarily to the study of external forces and motions associated with particles and rigid bodies. Statics discusses the equilibrium of the rigid bodies while at rest. Dynamics discusses the effect of forces on the motion of rigid bodies. In both statics and dynamics, objects are assumed to be rigid, which means any change of size or shape due to forces is neglected. Mechanics of materials differs from both statics and dynamics in that it studies real-world objects that deform under applied forces. The intensity of deformation and the distribution of the internal forces inside the body are of primary interest in mechanics of materials. As an example, look at this cell phone sitting on a table. The force of gravity pulls the phone downward. The equilibrium of forces acting on the phone is a topic studied in statics, as long as the phone remains stationary on the desk. Studying the phone when it's moving or falling down is a topic in dynamics. Mechanics of materials studies the phone often hitting the ground, asking questions such as how the force is distributed internally in the cell phone body. Will it deform? If so, how much is the deformation? Will it break? How can it be made stronger to make it drop resistance? In other words, mechanics of materials studies how a deformable body behaves when forces are applied to it and how much force a material can withstand without breaking. But why does it matter? Why are internal effects of forces in an object important? To answer this question, we need to zoom back and see what engineers do in general. Engineers are typically required to design and make a variety of objects that will be subjected to loading, such as automobiles, airplanes, ships, pipelines, bridges, buildings, tunnels, motors, machines, and many other load-carrying objects. Regardless of the application, however, a safe and successful design should address three main criteria – strength, stiffness, and stability. Let's look into them one by one. Designers need to ensure that the structure of a subject, which are basically the load-carrying components of the object, are strong enough to carry the predicted loads for their intended use during their lifespan. The element properties, such as thickness, width, and shape of the section, as well as the material properties that the section is made of, should be considered as they all affect strength. Engineers need to design elements strong enough to withstand the loads that will be applied that will not fail or fracture under maximum expected loads and will continue to perform properly under regular loadings during its service life. The second criteria to be satisfied is stiffness that reflects the resistance of the structure against deformation under loading. It's possible that an element is capable of carrying a load, but the deformation is too high that makes the structure unusable. For example, consider a suspension bridge that is shaking due to wind. Up to a certain limit, the cables and deck will carry the applied load without any fracture, but they also deform easily, which prevents the bridge from servicing as it's designed. Another example is a sagging floor that happens due to excessive deformation in the load-carrying beams and joists. Even though the structural components didn't break and are still capable of carrying the applied load, the building may not be usable due to stock doors and windows or the gaps between the floors and walls. Another important criteria in designing structure is stability. Instability refers to sudden failure of structures under certain loading before reaching their maximum strength. Consider a regular disc ruler with a rectangular section that is made of steel and it's compressed by hand. The ruler is initially capable of carrying the load, but by increasing the load and after a certain limit, it suddenly buckles. In this case, the ruler has failed in carrying the load without any sign of rupture or breaking in the material. This type of failure in which structure fails without reaching its maximum strength capacity 
is known as instability failure. In order to design structural components based on strength, stiffness, and stability criteria, engineers need to know how much are the forces in each component, and how a body behaves when forces are applied, which is primarily discussed in mechanics of materials. The distribution and intensity of internal forces, which is called stress, and internal deformation, known as strain, are of primary interest. Mechanics of materials starts with defining stress and strain as the main building blocks, then studying how to determine stresses and strains in various components such as axial members, torsional elements, beams, shafts, pipes, and pressure vessels. In addition, other topics such as stress and strain transformations, gears and power transmission systems, buckling of columns, failure theories, structural connections and energy methods are topics of discussion in mechanics of materials. An undergraduate course in mechanics of materials typically covers the basic topics needed for higher level courses. Advanced topics are typically offered in a senior or graduate level course. All right, now I understand that mechanics of materials is important and I would like to learn it, but what do I need to know in order to be successful in mechanics of materials and be successful in learning the content. Mechanics of materials is a fundamental subject that relies heavily on statics, in particular equilibrium equations, free body diagrams, Morse circle, and section properties such as centroid and moment of inertia are frequently used in various applications. In addition, solving problems typically involves a lot of mathematical calculations. Integral, derivative, and limit are mathematical tools used in developing various equations in mechanics of materials. If you are rusty on any of these topics, it's good to review and brush up before studying mechanics of materials. The last, but not the least skill that someone can practice in mechanics of materials is problem solving. Mechanics of materials requires understanding and solving several problems, some of which are totally new and challenging. In addition to learning a fundamental subject in engineering mechanics, studying mechanics of materials allows for practicing problem solving skill, which is probably the most important skill for engineers. Thank you very much, and I'll see you in the next lecture in which we will learn about stress and strain.